No, stop. Think of the children. Think of the children. Won't somebody please think of the children? Children, children, future, future. Are you ready for the children? Whoa, whoa, whoa. The future is a coming. Hey, hey, hey. Children, children, future, future. Oh, won't somebody please think of the children? What kind of an example are we setting? For your children. Children, children, children of the future. Kids! For your children, <laughs> for your <laughs> children, <laughs> for your <laughs> children. What kind of an example are we setting? I started Mandarin Chinese because I wanted to learn something different at university. So it was exciting, it's proved to be the right choice. It let me into a whole new world which has stayed with me throughout my working life. There are going to be, and there already are, jobs in China. Um, there are jobs to do with China here and our relationship with the country is day by day becoming increasingly more important. You ask children very casually at 11 why they want to learn Chinese, why they think it might be a good idea, and apart from saying the obvious things that it's cool because my parents can't do it, they also actually say, oh wow, well, it's because I want a job, you know, I'm going to work in China. Or someone like to try to read it, you should know all the characters. The Mandarin Excellence Programme is a programme for learners in schools who elect to study Chinese for eight hours a week. I've been setting um, Chinese examinations for about the last 25 years, so I know where children's levels are at with Chinese, but it exceeded all expectations, the performance of the children after the first year of the programme. It opens children's eyes into a completely different culture, a different way of thinking, a different linguistic structure from European languages. And I think children find being released from tenses, from worrying about verb endings, worrying about adjective endings, and just getting involved in what's intrinsically a puzzle is really motivating for them. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, you have a whole heap of characters and then you can build them up into all kinds of different sentences because you don't have to worry about adjectives agreeing, you don't have to worry about tenses. So it becomes a kind of puzzle of building what you've got using the characters and understanding that, ah, oh, that character that you saw there in that word actually can be pulled out to make an, another word with this character. I think it's the sort of puzzling side of it which is very interesting. I'm having a very severe insomnia recently. No matter how exhausted I am, whenever lying down on the bed, lots of things just started going through my mind, especially during the late midnight. Mostly worry, anxiety, and then again, worry. Time flies. I only get another year and a half to stay in London now. How can I make it the most? And also self-reflecting a lot. Am I work hard enough so far in the past year and a half? How is my English has been improved? Is my art developing well? Going to be 26 in six months. Why is my bank account having no deposit? And I still taking money from my family. Not a small amount of money, it's a huge amount. As an international student, my, my family spend 36,700 pounds for me to support my study here. We are not rich. They sold the house which they planned to be the heritage for me in the future, for getting this amount of money for me. I beg them to do so because I used to believe in my art so much. I truly believe if I got a chance to come to London, I can be successful by copying all the previous world well-known Asian artists' story. Escape from Asia, become an illegal migrant, and then carry on doing art. Anyway, whatever it is, it's all better than just trapped in Taiwan such a small island forever.
Because I look Asian and speaking with a Chinese accent, people often assume that I'm from China and extremely rich. I'm tired of explaining the difference to them now. Beside of that, I even started to learn Kung Fu so I can fulfill the stereotype of their assumption even better. I mean overall, who want to be a creative and who really cares? I'm just a foreigner. Robin told me I should really relax more. Relax? What does that even mean? From the literally meaning till the further concept, this word just totally does not apply to me. I do not take all the risk and pay off what I have got in life to come to this country to relax. I came here to survival, to pursue my higher achievement in life. I am here to fight for my life to pay whatever it is to become successful. How the hell on earth can I relax? Some people just wouldn't understand it. I don't blame them. Overall, the world is just not fair. I was born there, he was born here. He said those to me while he is lying on the bed the whole weekend by doing nothing, just Netflix, chilled, and smoking weed with his boyfriend. God bless him, born as a predominantly white male. His passport worked perfectly. As a British, his minimum wage per hour is eight pounds. Back in Taiwan, it's three. Robin came from quite a wealthy background, but I don't know why he fetishized working class lifestyle that much. He's very good looking, pretty tall as well, about 180 centimeters. His penis is even two times bigger than me, so unfair. When I first grabbed it, I literally laughed out. It's just too surreal for me. I feel like I'm a kindergarten kid in front of him. In all the respect, he is still such a nice guy. I mean, of course, his boyfriend doesn't know that we are actually having sex. But as being a flatmate, this is almost unavoidable. Sometimes I wonder which part he likes about me. Perhaps it's something exotic romance, an Asian size of dick that isn't that hard for him to take in. He can still enjoy getting fucked while maintaining his alpha male self-dignity. He once told me he hate pain during sex. It's probably a bit like after a whole weekday of fish and chip, a week and you really fancy some Thai green curry. But yes, just occasionally. I wasn't really aware of the fact that I am Asian before I arrived here in London. I used to feel I'm just a human being. However, my encounter here just keep reminding me that the fact I am Asian, it sometimes feel, feels like it's almost my obligation to show everyone how much Asian I am. Robin is being a bit ignorant, but I fully respect that. He is still a nice guy at the end of the day. He even introduces me a proper job, so I can stop letting those pathetic old men put their penis inside my body to earn money. That is how I become a Chinese teacher. I'm actually very satisfied with my new character. It helps me rebuild my self-esteem so much. I'm proud to introduce people that I'm a Chinese teacher nowadays. It is quite well paid as well. However, there is some fun fact about this job that I often think of it and that I feel amused. First of all, my boss is an Asian guy who was born and raised here in the UK, who does not even speak Chinese at all. Second, the fact of China is so economic raising up becoming the next top strong country. That is why the British parents want their kids to learn Chinese. However, China is using it exactly the same way to take over my country, from economic to culture invade. In a way, I am supporting all of this to happen. My students shouted out Ching Chong Tong to me during the first class. I asked them to stop it politely by explaining that it's actually rude. However, next week they did exactly the same. Keep shouting it. Ching Chong Tong during the class and not giving up, keep asking me what is the meaning of it then I got really mad, I respond no thank you, we do not say that because it actually has no meaning it's just people making fun of Asian language they then started to cry as if they were the victim they were probably all thinking about why is this inferior yellow monkey being mad at us they are 8 years old how can I really blame on them they are all not racist for sure, I told myself but even though they are, so what I'm a teacher now, I guess I'm not doing any art. How can I have done better then? My life so far is all about constantly giving up myself, from my nationality, to my art, to my self-dignity. Everyone has their own difficulty in life. I'm already being very lucky as a human being. I should treasure it. That is what I told myself every morning by looking in the mirror, 
and that is how I stopped myself to jump off the tube stage. I could not sleep well, but I'm still alive. This is the most important thing. At least I'm breathing still, even though I'm feeling suffocated with all the oxygen surrounding me. Thank you. That's right. In many ways, Kensington Wade looks like any other school, but this London prep school is different. The children here spend half of their time learning in English. What's the difference? Cats, um, scratch people. And the other half being taught in Mandarin. There are hundreds of Chinese-English dual-language schools in the United States, but Kensington Wade is the first of its kind in Western Europe. Uh, we're the first in Europe, we're obviously the first in the UK, but I don't think we'll be the last. I think uh, there's going to be a growing trend um, for this type of school. British schools traditionally focus on teaching French and German, but Mandarin is becoming increasingly popular. I think everybody sees that China is playing such a huge part um, in the world and the language itself is particularly difficult. So to start learning it in an immersive way from the age of three gives these children a, a great advantage of learning a language thoroughly and then not just becoming bilingual but becoming bicultural as well. Uh, many of our parents in their work deal with China, but also see that that very much is the future. Kensington Wade is a fee-paying school, but learning Mandarin is not confined to London's most affluent families. Last year, the government launched its Mandarin Excellence Programme, which aims to get at least 5,000 young people speaking Mandarin by 2020. By the time the children here leave school, China will more than likely be the world's largest economy and at a time when the UK is repositioning itself on the world stage it seems that for some parents there is no skill that will be more valuable to their children than speaking Mandarin. Kate Parkinson, CGTN, London. Praise be the party. Thank you the President Xi. People often ask me after staying here in London for five years away from my family being on my own how am I still wearing hijab? What they would never expect to hear as an answer is, I flew 7,800 kilometers away from my country just so I can put on this hijab, which I've been craving to do but not allowed. There are multiple ways of freedom. Most of the time I felt like people who were born with it don't actually understand the meaning of it. Perhaps I might somehow envy, but I get nothing to blame. When you're born in an abnormal country, you deal with it. Otherwise, there is nothing else that can be done. And I'm all ready to speak out now, even though with a shivering voice. Not a while ago, my classmate Sean asked me what is my plan for Christmas. Am I going back home during the holidays? I knew he was being frank, having a chat, but it doesn't come across to be a kind gesture in my mind at all. I'm not even sure how I can respond to it properly, so I put on the calmest tone I can do and reply. How can I ever go back to China? Look at my face and my hijab. I will get arrested immediately if I step on that land. He then seems extremely shocked and responds, how come? His ignorance is being so genuinely naive. I didn't even know where to start to give him a full lecture about China, my country, and what is the difference of Yuga, autonomous region where it actually comes from. Furthermore, what is going on there at the moment? Clearly, this 25-year-old British man, Sean, who is doing a county master degree with me isn't very politically sensitive and didn't watch and read enough news. Almost 80% of the international students on our course are from China. We have been studying together for more than a year now. I wonder, all over the time, does he actually just think I am Han Chinese and part of a group with everyone else? Just because he saw me speaking Mandarin Chinese with them? 
Or is it because I once told him I'm working as a primary school Chinese teacher to sustain my living? Or perhaps I really should stop telling people that I'm from China, although I'm holding the Chinese passport without a choice. I used to hate against all the Han Chinese, because growing up in Urumqi, all the Han Chinese people you can meet were either people from the Communist Party or some very savage business people. They were there either to monitor us or to exploit the resources of our area, day after day, year after year. The green land in Yuga is getting less and less. Instead, it is all factories of oil or gold mines nowadays. I still remember growing up, there used to be large green meadows, also horses, wild ones, running around the field so free. I get a picture of my father standing in front of it. Sometimes I'm staring at it and missing my dad and thinking about how interesting life is and the creator. Everything gets its timing and fate. Perhaps this is what is called retribution for sin. My family became wealthy because of my father who started to work with the people from the Communist Party and helped them to explore the gold mines in Yuga. Back then, there weren't many people fluent in both the Chinese and Yugo language. He then signed in, becoming a member of the Communist Party. If it's not because of this, they wouldn't even be able to have a passport. Not every citizen in China can get a passport, especially at Yugo Autonomous Region. The government worry that people have access to free information or move to other Middle Eastern countries. It has always been under severely repressive control. I, Growing up with the situation getting harsher and harsher from not being allowed to speak Kulon Yugo language in public, even until today I'm not allowed to practice the Islamic religion. Coming to London is the first time I get the chance to encounter different Chinese people. I guess the more culture and educated ones, which I did try to let go my prejudice towards them, see the people, not the ethnicity. However, pretty soon I discover, although we are speaking of the same language, raising in the same border, holding the same passport, we are not the same. I almost feel like we are different species. Although coming from a relatively worthy background, I still need to work hard as a teacher to support my living here, living in a shared flat. Unfortunately, rather than go to Harris to do shopping and having fancy afternoon tea, walking around the city during the weekend is my only hobby. I try to bond with them, but soon I realise I can't keep on their lifestyle. When I said I worried about money, talking about my bank account, he has £30 left. They are talking about reaching the daily credit card limit from their parent, which is £1,000 a day. When I said I can't find a room to fit my budget, I'm talking about a £500 room in a shared house. They are talking about living in the studio flat on their own, spending £1,500, which is more than how much I spent a month including my rent and living price. What is even worse, when during the chat that I accidentally found out they all believe in China's Communist Party, not aware of the fact the country is trying to manipulate information and news, banning everything that whenever they don't want people to know. They have zero awareness and rather believe all the news is written in simplified Chinese but not using Google and getting access to the international press. And they genuinely believe the government treats the Yuga as region's people nicely and all the Yuga people are happy to be a part of China. They are testing me, trying my loyalty towards the country. We are all spying on each other, even though we are 7,800 kilometers away from our homeland. <sighs> we have lost contact with my father two years ago. He got arrested and put into what the party called a re-education camp. The government accused that he doesn't speak Mandarin Chinese. He needed to be re-educated. My father went to Beijing for a university degree. How could he not speak Chinese? He works with the Chinese people for most of his entire life. We don't know exactly what happened or what is the truth. Mother asked me to stop crying, put on a smile and carry on life. That is the least we can do. Do not understand, just keep on moving. She is a strong one as always. She is not wearing hijab nor long sleeve shirts anymore. Whenever I call her on video call, one will still put on a smile and laugh. She told me, said Stadler, there will be an uncle from the government coming to the house once a week to make sure if she and my little sister need anything. Praise be the party. Thank you to the President Xi. The country really takes care of us. How lucky we are. This is how we usually end the phone call. We know we are being listened to. Sean went speechless after I told him all of the stories at once. His lips somehow trembled and asked me, can you not seek any help? Maybe ask for a settlement from the UK's government? 
My nerve gets me again. I inhale and sigh, hardly. He really has no idea, does he? So I explain to him with my calmest voice, my situation is not the worst. At least I still get some money and I'm doing a degree. I will try my best to find a job and stay here. I work as a volunteer for Red Cross. Those people from Syria are in a way worse situation. They can't even get a sense of relief. How can I? Plus, I don't have any evidence of what is going on in Yugo now. My family is still there. If I sought for political asylum and make a big move, I might put them in danger. I haven't been back home for three years now. Life here is not easy. I work extra hard to sustain, but at least I can wear hijab and go to the mosque. It helps me. Having faith does make me content about my life. I'm holding a Chinese passport, but Chinese people don't consider I am one of them because I have a different culture route, different facial features, a name that is not Han Chinese enough, and a different religion. People treat us as a terrorist because we fight for our own culture, language, religion. I miss my family, but I don't recognize the place where I came from anymore. Is it still a home? I'm putting on all of my courage to speak out here. My story is not special. I am negligible. I am not a fighter. My religion teaches me not to hate, but it doesn't mean that I need to be voiceless. This worth forward with enough deliberately silenced and preferably unheard. I am in London now, on my own, breathing the free air under the blue sky just as fresh as the first day when I arrived. How can I ever forget all of this? Dear Creator, I know life has its own arrangement. I am not worried about not seeing my father again. There is always an afterlife. How long is one's life on earth? Perhaps 75 more years I can live. That is really not long at all, so I can wait. Wait for the 75 years to pass. Then I will reunite with my father, my family. I can wait.